warning. This is a warning. This recording contains unconventional, unorthodox teaching, some of which may strike at long-held beliefs. If you are a stickler for orthodoxy or get upset when your dearly held beliefs are challenged, then this is not the recording for you. This is a warning. Welcome to Jackson Snyder Presents. You're about to hear one of the most beautiful pieces of music in the repertoire, Hansel and Gretel, from the writings of Engelbert Humperdinck. No, not the one from 20 years ago. This is somebody with the same name way, way on back. And then we have Andrew Carlson with a nearly unknown text from the Ethiopic Orthodox Canon, one of the books of Clement there, Clement speaking on Paul. I would guess 99.999% of those who say they're versed in the Bible have never heard of this text. So I'm going to be doing a teaching about Paul from the Ethiopian Book of Clement. Now, before I, I start reading from this Book of Clement, I want to kind of explain a little bit about it because it's a very unknown document. Basically, in the Ethiopian Bible, there are uh, about eight extra books in their New Testament. One of those books is the Book of Clement, and that uh, is divided into seven sections. And sections one to two are found in other manuscripts, in Arabic manuscripts. Sections three through seven are only found in the Ethiopian. Now, overall, the Ethiopian manuscripts seem to be a, a uh, shortened version of the original text, although even though it's shorter, it also doesn't have some of the more troublesome passages or troublesome readings. The longer text of the Arabic it has more of the original text, I believe, but I think it also has some interpolations and additions sometimes that sometimes the Ethiopian better preserves. So just like with most books of scripture, and not just scripture, but any book in general, you have to look at the different witnesses and take it on a case-by-case -case basis of which reading is the more correct one. Uh, so I'm going to be reading from this document. Now, I... I think what I'm going to do first, though, is read the introduction part of it. And the reason I'm going to do that is because it relates to the Nazarene Acts that we're familiar with. Uh, so even though it's not specifically about Paul, it connects it strikingly with the Nazarene Acts. Uh, so I think that's relevant, and I'm going, to, I'm going to read that part as sort of an introduction to the information about Paul. Uh, so essentially, this document is related to, in some way, the, the Nazarene Acts, but it, it's from a different tradition or stream of preservation, but uh, it has a common source, if you will. So that makes it uh, even more interesting because of its, as we've talked about before, the Nazarene Acts seems to present a not so positive view of Paul, and it's very pro-Peter. Uh, so this document uh, kind of further connects with this idea of making Paul not look as good and putting Peter in a better light. With that said, I'm going to start reading from uh, this document. So it says, oh, and by the way, there's going to be parts in here where, you're, where you will say, oh, that doesn't sound right, or that seems uh, too Catholic, or things like that. So just keep in mind that there are, as I said, uh, there are sometimes there's interpolations here and there, so you just have to use your discerning ability when, when I'm reading through this. I'm going to be reading, for the most part, I'm going to be reading from the Arabic version, but when I switch over to the Ethiopian, I'll let you know. The eighth part of the Book of Clement, in which he will narrate his story, that is to say, the story of this disciple of Tables, Clement, the pupil of the great master the shining, bright, pure, and spiritual star, the owner of the great secret, the faithful Peter, the rock, on whom be our best greetings. That was written by a scribe. Uh, so it starts, While our venerable father Peter was walking one day on the shore of the Sea of Antioch, together with a company of the apostles of our Lord, John, Philip, and others, and also some of the seventy disciples, he saw me, Clement, standing near the sea, and weeping and wailing because of the calamities that had befallen me since the day I had left Rome. 
I was naked and covering my nakedness with the water because I was shipwrecked, and the waves and the winds had cast me on that part of the coast. And the brethren said, O oh, Peter, you must know the history of young man. And my master, the great father Peter, came to me and said to me, Why are you weeping, O oh, young man? Who are you? Who are your father and mother? Tell me, O oh, my son, your story in order that I may know it. I'll stop here for a second. You see he's referring to Peter as Father Peter. I'm pretty sure in the Ethiopian version, uh, it doesn't say uh, Father Peter. So it just shows an example of a, a later edition. Because we know in the, the Nazarene Acts, uh, Peter says not to call anyone Father. Uh, so I just wanted to mention that. Uh, continuing. And he spoke to me in Latin and the dialect used by the inhabitants. And I said to him, And who are you, O my Lord and Master? My soul has truly revived by what you have said to me. Three days I have been standing in this place, and no one has spoken to me in my language, except you. And since I left Rome, I have not met with anyone speaking its language except you. And during these three days in which I have stood here in this place, no one has asked me my story except you, and no one can understand that which I say to him. And the master said to me, I am Peter, the head of the disciples of Christ. Now, this, uh, what I just read, differs strikingly from the Nazarene Acts uh, account of how he met Peter. So there's, there are some inconsistencies here with the story in the Nazarene Acts, but as you'll see in a little bit, uh, it starts getting more and more similar to what we know from the Nazarene Acts of Clement's story. Uh, continuing, and he narrated to me this, his story concerning the message of the Christ our Lord, that is to say the gospel. And God inspired my heart with the knowledge that his words were true, and my soul glowed with the strengthening contact of the Holy Spirit. And I believed in him and in, and in his miracles, and was immediately baptized by Father Peter in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, and was marked with the tebuth, that is to say, holy anointing oil, which our Lord had confided and given to him, and which he kept. He was very pleased with me, and also, and so also were those who accompanied him. He taught me the prescriptions and joined on those who believed in Christ, and he made me his secretary. He disclosed to me the secrets which have been described above. When he says above, that means the, uh, earlier in the book, tons of stuff which um, I haven't read. It's the first uh, seven sections. Um, and he says, and I wrote them from his dictation and kept them with me. He also confided to me the books, that is to say, all the leaves which were with him, and which had been written by the hand of Christ. And he made me his confidential secretary to the exclusion of the rest of the disciples, among whom were my brothers Faustus and Faustinus, a fact of which I was not aware. Uh, I'm a little cold, so my voice is a little shaky, but uh, hopefully that's not too distracting. Um, anyways, continuing. And he made me acquainted with his secrets in the same way as the Christ had done with him to the exclusion of others when he had noticed the purity. When therefore this father saw the purity of my conscience, he delivered to me all that the Lord Christ had confided to him alone. I became therefore his scribe in Latin and in Greek. My Lord Christ had not yet revealed to him my story, nor from whence I had come. He did not ask me any questions concerning this affair till a long time after, when he was on the point of repairing to the town of Laodicea. And this happened after the Lord had chosen Saul, who was called Paul the Apostle. On a certain day, Paul was proceeding to the city of Damascus for the purpose of destroying the churches of God and driving away the believers found in it. And the Lord appeared to him on his way and blinded him. Thereupon Paul said, Who are you? Tell me. And Paul repeated his question, Who are you? A second and third time. And the Christ said to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me and contradict me? And Saul said to him, Who are you, my, O my Lord, that I may believe in you? And the Christ answered, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom you are persecuting. And when Paul believed, our Lord Jesus Christ ordered him to go to Damascus to a disciple called Ananias, who would restore his sight for him. After this, I told him my story and all that had befallen me, and revealed also to him the story of my mother and of my brothers. I must now narrate faithfully my story in order that faithful may know the abundance of the grace of God to us, because his power and his might assembled us and brought us together and revealed us one to another after a long and protracted separation. My teacher and spiritual father was one day in the town of Eridus, one of the dependencies of Laodicea. And while he was walking in one of the streets, he saw a modest woman standing near the door of a house soliciting alms. The teacher said to her, Omen, why are you soliciting alms? I see that you are young enough and strong enough to work for your living. 
and that you are able to serve and earn what is sufficient for your livelihood. She said to him, O teacher and venerable man, if you knew the state in which I am and were acquainted with my story and my affairs, you would have implored the Lord to take my soul through the death of my body so that I might find rest from the wretchedness, fatigue, poverty, need, tribulations, and misery that have set me. And her tears fell on her cheeks. And the teacher said to her, And what is your story, O woman? And she said, O venerable man, I am a woman from the great city of Rome and from the daughters of kings. I had a husband of noble descent called Faustonius, by whom God gave me three sons, the eldest of whom was named Faustus, the middle one Faustinus, and the youngest Clement. In my sleep I dreamed a dream, the interpretation of which necessitated my going to sea in a boat in order to repair to the island of Athens. It said uh, in the document, SIC in parentheses, and I think that means error or something. I guess Athens is not an island, but in the text it says island. Anyways, repair to the island of Athens where I could study philosophy and wisdom. My eldest son Faustus and the middle son Faustinus accompanied me. While we were traveling on the sea, winds blew on us from all directions and stirred the waves of the sea and caused the captain to lose control of the boat which was driven by the winds in a direction other than that which we had intended to pursue. Then the boat broke up, and I found myself on a floating plank, which after a time cast me on this coast. I do not know what happened to my children, and for two years I have been sitting by this door in a bewildered state, begging my bread. Do not blame me, therefore, O venerable man, for the state in which I am. And the teacher stood before her for an hour, pondering over her story and amazed at her affair. Now, the teacher had previously sent two disciples to Laodicea to transact urgent business that he had there. When they came back to the town of Eridus, they sat down on their way near the gate of the town, and they rested their backs against the wall and began to talk in such a way that the woman had solicited alms, who had solicited alms, was able to hear them. Their conversation was to the effect that one of them said to the other, My story is very strange, but I will tell it to you, O brother. And he said, O brother, we have been the disciples of this holy one for many years and we do not know each other's story nor in which town each one of us was born and Faustus said i am one of the inhabitants of rome related to the emperor my father was called postonius and my mother mitradura had two brothers one of whom was and i had two brothers one of whom was Faustinus, and the other the youngest was called clement my mother dreamt a dream the interpretation of which necessitated our going out our going to the town of athens in order that she might learn wisdom. We put to sea, therefore, I and my mother and my brother, and we left Rome because of her. She took me and my brother with her, and she left the young, youngest brother with my father. And when we put to sea, to sea, fierce winds blew on us, and our boat broke up. I was cast on a coast from a floating plank, and I do not know what happened to my, brother, my mother and to my brother after me. And his companion said to him, Were it not for my fear that you might deny it, I would have said that you were my brother, because I also am from the inhabitants of Rome, and my story is identical with yours to the time when our boat broke up on the sea. When the woman heard their conversation, she recognized from what had happened to them that they were her children. She sprang up from her place and threw herself on them, weeping and saying, As the Lord liveth, both of you are my sons, and I am your mother, Mitradura. She narrated to them her story and gave them proofs by means of which they recognized her. They did not cease to cling with affection one to another and to kiss one another's cheeks. And I, Clement, was at that time in Laodicea, and they became possessed with an indescribable joy, gladness, and exultation. Then they arose, all of them, and went to our teacher, Peter, and their mother said to him, By the truth of the one whom you worship, O venerable and blessed man, these two disciples are my sons, and I am their mother. And she narrated to him all that had happened, and the teacher was very pleased with her story and said, I implore the Lord who showed you your two sons and caused you to meet them to grant that you might that, that you meet also with your beloved ones who still remain absent, namely their father and brother. As for me, I had gone to, to the town of Laodicea, where I had finished my business and, come, and came back to Eridus. In the meantime, the Holy Spirit had inspired the teacher Peter to ask me about my story and my country. And he said to me, O oh, my son Clement, you have been with me for two years in the service of Christ, and I did not ask you about your country and your story. The Holy Spirit has inspired me to ask you concerning all this. By the truth of Christ, tell me, therefore, your story, and narrate it to me in full from beginning to end. Uh, stop for a second. As you can see, for those familiar with the Nazarene Acts, it's generally following along very closely, but when you do a comparison of, of the details, a lot of discrepancies in some of the details. Um, 
uh, continue. And I said to him, I am from the city of Rome. My father was of noble descent and related to the emperor. I had two brothers, one of whom was called Faustus and the other Faustinus. And we had a noble born mother who was endowed with wisdom, sound judgment, and chastity. She dreamed a dream which necessitated her going to sea in order to prepare to repair to Athens and there learn wisdom. My two brothers, Faustus and Faustinus, accompanied her in order to look after her. This happened 20 years ago, and we have not had any news from them since they went to sea. At that time, I was a child, and when I reached the age of puberty, I went also to sea in order to proceed to Athens and there hear some news about them. Our boat, however, broke up, and the sea cast me on the coast on which you saw me and noticed that I had been shipwrecked. My two brothers had then gone to town on business, and when my mother heard my story, she threw herself on me and said, By the truth of the God you worship, you are my son, and I am your mother. Then she said to the holy teacher, This is my younger son, Clement, mentioned by the two brothers in their narrative. Teacher Peter went himself then to town in order to seek my brothers, whom he brought back. When they saw me speaking to my mother, they were displeased, because since we had been fellow disciples, I had not spoken to a woman. And they said to the teacher, Do you not see Clement speaking to our mother? When the mother heard their words, she embraced them all and wept bitterly with great emotion. When my, mother, when my brothers recognized me, they threw themselves upon me, embraced me, and held me fast, and my mother did likewise. Then they said, this is our brother and this is our mother. God brought us together through your invocations and your prayers because he wished us to learn Christian philosophy from you, O spiritual father. We know that Christ answers your prayers and grants your requests. We beseech you now to bring us and our Father together. Ask him to reveal to you whether he is dead or alive, because if you pray to Christ our Lord for us, he will answer your prayers. And the teaching Peter said, teacher Peter said, I shall pray that Christ our Lord Jesus of Nazareth to send your Father to you dead or alive. I will implore him to raise him from his grave and bring you together here near me. And the teacher arose to strengthen his feet, uh, and he prays. Uh, he does a prayer, and I'm skipping the prayer because it's kind of lengthy. Uh, then what's interesting, here's an example of seeing how the scribes alter things. So you've got in the longer Arabic text something that seems kind of, well, it doesn't reconcile at all with the, the Nazarene Acts in the sense that it's, it's a very different uh, version of this when they meet the Father. Basically, it's a... We were at the time in, Lod in Laodicea, and before the teacher Peter had finished the conversation with the Lord, lo, a thick, awe-inspiring, and luminous cloud appeared. <coughs> it moved towards us in a very short time and came down until it reached the earth. Uh, then it lifted up again, and immediately after we saw a man walking towards us from the cloud, a venerable old man, and we heard distinctly a voice saying, Get out to your children. We beheld the venerable man coming out of the valley that was there, looking bright, but wearing clothes that were not of high quality. He had hair which was as white as the pure hair of a lamb, and his head was bare. The teacher Peter looked at him and said to him, Are you one of us or from other beings? Indeed, he thought, that he thought and believed that he was a demon, or that he was one of the evil spirits. And the old man said in Latin, I am a rational human being. Uh, and the teacher said to him, give an account of yourself, who you are, and what made you fall into this valley, which is the valley of demons and rebellious ones in which no man dwells. So that's what the Arabic version says for that. Uh, when they, the conversation Peter mentions uh, to the father. The Ethiopian uh, is more believable, more consistent with the Nazarene Acts. So I'm just going to read that dialogue. He says, uh, O aged one. Art thou one of our race or of another? For my master Peter thought he might be an unclean soul. Then the aged man said unto him in the Roman tongue, I am a man like unto thyself, O aged one. So that's the Ethiopian version. So that, I believe, is closer to the original reading. And the Arabic version, they uh, uh, interpreted it. They thought when it said unclean one, it's talking about a demon. And when he said... Uh, when he said, I am a man like unto thyself, they interpreted that as him saying, I'm a man, not a demon. So they read into it and added that in the Arabic text. Uh, but so the old man narrates his story, um, and I'll skip that. But anyways, you can see this is clearly connecting uh, this document in some way with the Nazarene Acts. So now I'm going to just... 
skip all that stuff, and I'm going to start uh, with the Paul stuff, the stuff that makes Paul, puts Paul in a very uh, unflattering light. So let's see here. Okay, so here's how it starts. So there's a bunch of text intervening of another, of, uh, of um, let's see, uh, Peter and John go to a city, and they're getting persecuted by some people there. And um, as I'm about to read, you'll see uh, the Messiah is about to send uh, Paul to assist Peter. Um, after this, we returned. Uh, let me see. Oh, I'm not sure if that's it, but okay. Um, then the Christ, my Lord, said, Be not afraid, O Peter, because I have chosen Saul, who is called Paul, for you, and that I will send him to you as a companion who will help in your task. And I replied, this Paul is the one previously called Saul who persecuted us where, wheresoever we went. He is our bitterest enemy. And the Christ our Lord said to him, He was so formerly, but now he is a disciple. And Christ the Lord disappeared from my sight after he had uttered these words to me. We will now tell the story of Paul. This is Onia Carlson. This is Onia Carlson. If I drank coffee. If I drank coffee. I would be drinking sting coffee. I would be drinking sting coffee. The coffee that bites back. The coffee that bites back. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. I won't say that. All right. <laughs> Thank you. The sting coffee. The coffee that bites you back. Essenecoffee.com. Jackson Snyder present is back. Hope you enjoyed your platitudes today. We will now tell the story of Paul. Paul showed greater en enmity against the Christian religion than all the creatures of God, hated the disciples more than anybody else, and sought them wherever they went, and carried the orders. It says the sultan here. This is from an Arabic uh, manuscript, so obviously it's not the sultan. Uh, but carried the orders of the sultan and of the governors to harm those who believed in Christ. He obtained judicial sanctions against them from every tribunal, and accompanied by a considerable number of soldiers, he used to search every town and every village which he knew had received the message of Christ, had accepted his faith, had been baptized in the water of baptism, and had rejected the religion of the unbelievers or the religion of Judaism. For 14 years, he did not cease to persecute, rob, and murder the prominent followers and the disciples of Christ and to shed their blood. The first one he murdered was the, was the son of his sister, a man called Stephen. He lied against him from after the ascension of the Christ, our Lord, into heaven and assembled a company of the Jews who bore false witness against him and condemned him to death. Before embracing the Christian faith, Paul was called Saul. When all the Jews yielded to his desire, he brought his nephew Stephen out of town to a hole which he had dug and in which he was stoned to death. And that blessed disciple prayed for them, saying, O Lord, forgive them. The zeal of Saul was so intense that he collected all the clothes of those who participated in the murder of his nephew Stephen from fear lest some of the blood of Stephen should fall on them and defile them. Paul persisted in his hatred during all the above-mentioned years. The manner in which he was converted from Judaism to the faith of Christ our Lord is as follows. He took with him signed letters from Jerusalem to Damascus in order that he might go there and persecute the disciples of Christ and demolish the churches which the faithful had built in it. While Saul was proceeding together with his men and his horses, and when it was midday, a door from heaven was opened before them, and the place in which they were was illuminated with a light resembling that of the sun. And the earth shook and quaked from the majesty of that light. Paul and all those who were present with him were bewildered and agitated at the awe-inspiring things which they saw. And the earth was going to swallow them. And they were certain it was the power of God that had manifested itself upon them and that his wrath had fallen upon them. While they were all awestruck and bewildered, not knowing what God wished them to do, lo, they heard all of them a most awe-inspiring and terrifying voice from heaven saying, Saul, Saul. How long will you persecute me and strive to contradict me? Can you carry the sharp edge of a blade with the palm of your hand? That's a very different translation. Um, immediately after the earth became dark and the sun was obscured, then Saul said, Who are you, O Lord? And he replied, I am the Nazarene Christ, the Son of God. And Saul said, From this moment I will believe that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And overwhelmed by the awe-inspiring things that he witnessed, he fell on his face to the ground, and the angels took his soul immediately. And in a vision, he saw our Lord in the majesty of his glory, saying to him, I have chosen you to be an apostle to me. Go now to Damascus and proceed to the great church found in it, because I have there a disciple called Ananias who will make you whole. 
And immediately after the soul of Saul came back to him, and he found only a few of the companions that were with him. He then, while blind, proceeded to Damascus and asked about the great church. When the priest of the church, who was named Ananias, found him, he said to him, Come, O my brother Saul, in the love of Christ our Lord, because our Lord has chosen you to be his disciple and his preacher. And Ananias placed his pure hands on the eyes of Saul and said, In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, open ye, O eyes, and return to your normal state. And the eyes of Saul opened forthwith, and thin scales like small husks fell from them. And he asked for water, with which he ordered him to wash his eyes. And after, after having washed his face and his eyes, he received sight forthwith. And that very night Saul saw in a vision that the Christ our Lord, who said to him, From this moment you will not be called Saul, but Paul. I have made you my preacher before the kings, and a companion to Peter, my disciple, the chief and the chairman of my elect. And the Christ our Lord ordered Paul to go to Antioch. And when he went there, he met the great and the presiding teacher, Peter, and also John Wilde, both were in prison. Okay, stopping there for a second. So this is endorsing Paul as a brother of the faith. But as you're going to see in a little bit, while, it, yes, it endorses him, it also presents a shocking uh, story about Paul which uh, a lot of people would be uncomfortable with. but So you'll see that now. Uh, and the great father said, which he's talking about Peter, at daybreak, we saw Paul the elect knocking at the door of the prison. And I said to John, call him to us. And he called him. When Paul saw John having the middle of his head shaven, he said to him, what is this thing you have innovated in this town? Uh, they, they had shaved uh, Paul excuse me, they had shaved Peter and John's heads uh, as part of their treatment, uh, their poor treatment of them. Uh, and John said to him, Do not be amazed, O disciple Paul, at that which you see in me. And Paul opened the door of the prison, entered, greeted me, received my benediction, and said to me, and to John, Do not be grieved at what you have suffered from the inhabitants of Antioch. By the truth of Christ the Lord, who appeared to me on the way, he sent me to you in order that I may, I may preach in his name with you. And we left our place, and he went and met the heads of the city of Antioch, and spoke to them what he wished. Then he dispatched a messenger to us, and called us to him. The messenger ushered us into the temple of the idols, and we entered and found Paul praying and worshiping before the idols, and suspicion entered into our mind concerning his faith. When he finished his worship, he turned towards me and said, O man, what is your name? And I answered, Peter. And he said, Who is your God? I answered, <clears throat> A God, one in nature and three in attributes, worshipped and glorified by his creatures and praised by his myriads. He is the creator of all rational and irrational beings. He is the feeder, the giver, and the provider. He created the created beings, perfected them, and endowed them with wisdom and might. He enjoined his worship upon them, but they disbelieved in him and worshipped the rebel and injured themselves in their services to the rebellious archon because they were all the time worshiping idols. And he showed forbearance to them generation after generation, but they did not fear God, the avenging Lord, who fathoms the secrets of the hearts. When, however, many generations passed in this way, and Satan drew to himself all mankind, this displeased the jealous Lord, and he sent his son, the mighty teacher, who came down to the earth and appeared in a covering which he chose to himself from light, which he materialized, and from which he spoke and performed things which he wished to perform in his world. Then he ascended into heaven by his power and sent us his disciples to all creatures by his will. And Paul said, when your master came down from his heaven, what pious works did he do which would make him worthy of headship? And I replied, he performed miracles that transcend the, transcend the minds and forgave the sins of the ignorant. And he said, and what did this great and ancient master of yours give you? And I replied, he granted each one of us to perform the wonders which he performed and to cure every man from his diseases and his ailments. Now I'm switching over to the Ethiopian version because it's longer here and it's even more unflattering of Paul than the, um, the Arabic version. So it says, and they said unto him, are these men able to open the eyes of those who have been blind from, the, from their mother's wombs? And Peter and John said unto them, yea, we can do that. Then Paul said unto those who were gathered together there, if these men can work this miracle, and make it manifest before us, I also can do likewise by the might of the gods. And straightway they brought in before them two blind people, 
And immediately the men of the city were gathered together according to their various sorts and conditions so that they might see a wonderful thing. And Peter said unto John, All my beloved one, first of all, pray and make supplication unto our Lord that he will open the eyes of this blind man. Then John said unto me, Unto thee hath been given the greater power, and thou art our chief and our head. And on this occasion it is meet for thee to hasten to fulfill this work. And I, Peter, turned towards the east, and my heart was sorely dismayed by reason, reason of the falling away behavior of Paul, and by reason of the prayer and supplication which he continued to make in the house of idols. And I prayed and made supplication unto my Lord and God, and he helped me, and I drew nigh unto the blind man, and said, In the name of the Son of the living God, who hath existed, who was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and whom the Jews crucified, let the eyes of this blind man be opened, and let him see the world clearly, and straightway the blind man received his sight, and he glorified God, and the people marveled because of what they had seen. Then Paul said unto them, Marvel ye not at what ye have seen, for this aged man possesseth sorcery, whereby he openeth the eyes. But now I, by the might of the gods, will do something which is better than that which ye have done. So Paul rose up and prayed, and the people thought that he was praying to their idols, but he was praying and making supplication secretly in his heart unto our Lord Christ that he would help him and would accept his petition. Then he drew nigh unto the sick blind man, and he laid his hand upon his eyes, and they became opened, and he saw the world clearly. And he gave glory unto God because he had wrought this thing for him. Now the infidels rejoiced and imagined that their gods had done this thing like unto the disciples of Christ. And they paid great honors unto them, and they magnified their gods exceedingly. And I, Peter, held converse with my brother John secretly, for we were marveling at, at the act of Paul, and wondering whether Simon the magician had appeared unto us in the form of Paul, and had this thing by the might of his magic, that he might be an adversary unto us. And whilst we were meditating the things in our heart, behold, Paul called us unto the temple before the magistrates who were filled with wonder, for their hearts were strengthened, and their souls rejoiced because of what Paul had done. And Paul said unto us, Behold, we have seen what you have done, and you have seen what our gods have done, and they have revealed their power among us. Have you any other miracles which ye can work? Then we said unto Paul, Whatsoever miracles thou wishest, that is to say, healing of the sick and suffering, the straightening of the limbs of the paralyzed, the cleansing of the lepers, the casting out of devils, the making of the deaf to hear, the loosening of the tongues of the dumb, and the raising up of the dead by the might of our Lord Christ, the Son of the living God, who hath existed, all these things we can do. And Paul said unto us, Tomorrow then shall these things be. And they took us back to the prison house and informed the emperor of our story and of what had taken place through us and through Paul. Then the emperor sent messengers unto Paul and unto the priests of the idols, and they brought them unto him. And he inquired of them concerning what had happened. And they informed him of what we had done and what Paul had done. And the emperor answered Paul and inquired of him what district he came from and what his name was, and what his country was. Then Paul said unto him, I am Saul from the city of Tarsus, and my business is well known, and standeth revealed. For from my youth up until this present, I have made myself an adversary unto these men. And behold, they say that they are able to raise the dead, but the dead emperor no one can raise except the creator. And neither I nor any other man among the magicians and sorcerers hath the power to raise the dead. Thou knowest well, O emperor, that which I myself did when I opened the eyes of a blind man by a mystery, and that I afterwards made known unto thee the mystery. I'll stop for a second. Jackson, when you walked out, um, I read about how Paul said, I can, I can heal people by the power of my gods, and then Paul's praying, and it, everyone thinks he's praying to the gods, but he's actually praying to the Messiah, and he heals the blind person, and everyone thinks, all the pagans think that their gods uh, accomplished this. Um, okay, so, and the emperor said unto him, I have a son who died three months ago. In the Arabic, it's three years ago. Uh, uh, and his body hath now perished and fallen into decay. Will these men be able to raise up my son? Then Paul said unto the emperor, Bring them quickly and inquire of them concerning this thing, so that they may know what they will say. So the emperor sent messengers unto them. Okay, now I'm switching back to the Arabic text, because now the Arabic is fuller. After three days, Paul called us to him while he was in the temple of idols and surrounded by a great number of Magians. Before him were madmen, paralytics, lepers, deaf and dumb, lame, and men affected with rigidity, 
in their wrists and with skin diseases. And Paul said, Oh, Peter, these are your guests today. So ask your Lord to give them healing. And I said, I will do willingly and with pleasure what you have asked me to do in this very house. And I did not cease laying my hands upon each of one of them till all were cured. Every one of those that were cured of his diseases proclaimed the Christ my Lord. The place in which we were was then filled with cries and continuous shouts. And the majority of the people who were present put on the garment of baptism, and many words of thanks were addressed to us. And Paul said, O Peter, if your words concerning your God are true, you will raise a dead man for us. If you work such a miracle, the first one to believe in your master would be I. And the king said, If he raises my son who is dead, I shall be the first to believe in him, and so also will the, all the inmates of my house. And the inhabitants of the city said, And we all will believe and perform all the obligations of his faith, which he will teach us. And I replied, Yes, I will do so when I have raised the dead man. You ought to serve the God of heaven and earth. And they answered, Yes, we will do so. And Paul said, Bring a dead man. One of the prefects of the city had an only son who was dead, but the father being away on a journey, the relatives did not bury the son until the father's arrival. Now they brought and presented this dead man, and Paul said, O oh, aged one, if you raise this dead man, we will all believe in your God. And I prostrated myself before the Lord Jesus Christ and wept before him. I was in great fear at that time, and said in my prayer, My God and my Lord, do not forsake me, but listen to me according to your habit with me. Confirm your true promise to me, and raise this dead man, in order that I may teach these people that you are the living God beside whom there is no other God. And I rose from my prostration and signing myself with the sign of the cross. I said with a loud voice that could be heard by all those present, O dead man, arise in the name of Jesus Christ, whom the Jews crucified in Jerusalem. And the dead man rose forthwith, and the shouts of the people increased in their glorifications to the name of Christ. And Paul said, If you raise also the son of the king, we will believe in your God, I the king and all his kingdom. After three, oh, I just read that. Oh, I'm sorry. And I, Peter, answered, Any time you choose to have this done, I will perform to you such a miracle in the name of the Christ my Lord, O you inhabitants of Antioch. After the above words were uttered, we separated ourselves from the crowds. Three days later, Paul went to the house of the king, and, um, let's see, and, sorry, three days later, Paul went to the house of the king and said to him, These men have said that they were able to raise the dead in the name of their God, and they have raised the son of the prefect, and have also said that they will do the same to the son of the king. As to the gods whom we serve, they are not able to heal the sick, nor to show a sign, nor to open the eyes of the blind. Okay, here's a contradiction between the Ethiopian and the Arabic. In the Arabic, it says, our gods are not able to heal the sick. But the Ethiopian has all healing the blind, uh, allegedly, in, in the power of the gods. Uh, so there's a discrepancy there in, that, in the two versions. But anyways, continuing nor to cure diseases, nor to make lepers whole, as these men did in the name of their God. We have asked them to do a great thing which no one has so far heard that a created being has ever done. If these men do it, we must, all of us, return a word to their God. And the king said, My son died three years ago, as I said, the Arabic says three years, the Ethiopian says three months, and he is buried in a mausoleum. I know that he has become a handful of bones with no soul whatsoever in them. If these men raise him to life, I shall be the first to embrace their faith. I, I with all my relatives, my friends, and the inhabitants of my city. And if anyone does not follow me, I will destroy him with this my sword. And Paul said to him, And if these men are not able to raise your son to life? The king answered, I will torment them with every torment and remove them from this world. And Paul said, I agree with this condition. Then I, Peter, was summoned along with John to the house of the king. And we were honored, treated with deference, and given the first seats. And Paul began, we have made a pact with, with you by which you ought to stand. And I, Peter, said, what pact have you with us? And the king answered, I have a son who died three years ago. You shall raise him and bring him to life in the name of your God. And I answered, if I do what you wish, O king, and bring your son to life in the state which you will know, what will you do as part of your bargain? And the king replied, I will believe in your God and with all my household. And singling to Paul, he added, together with this my vizier and with all the inhabitants of my kingdom. And I, Peter, replied, let us then proceed to where the youth lies. And the king rose along with all those who were present, and they walked towards the door of the corridor, which led to the place in which the son of the king was buried. Behind me and behind, behind me and before me were innumerable crowds. I ordered the door of the vault to be opened, and it was opened, and then I intimated to the king, to Paul, and to some of the king's retinue and relatives to descend into the mausoleum and to verify the condition of the dead son of the king and then to report him. When all, the son, when all of them saw him 
they said, we have only found some of his large limbs. All the rest had, has perished and suffered dissolution. And I, Peter, uncovered my head and began to pray towards the east and stretched my hands before my creator and, and said before all those present in a loud voice that could be heard by all, I know, my Lord and my God, Jesus Christ, Son of God, that you are present here with me and that as you are here present, you are also present in every part of the heavens and of the earth. No height and no depth are without you. Do not forsake me and do not leave me, but let your providence encompass me wherever I may be dwelling. You have ordered me to preach the gospel to mankind in your name and to deliver them from the snare, the ropes, and the nets of the archon, in order that they may know you are the only Son of God and that the Spirit of God is in the essence of God, and that he is not, as it is said, but one God, one Lord, the first and eternal God with his word, through whom he speaks and through whom he created all created beings and with his spirit who proceeds from him and imparts life to all beings. Uh, as I said, the Ethiopian uh, differs here, like it's short, it's shorter, it's a shorter text. So some of that stuff might sound later edition interpolation, uh, and you can kind of have an idea when you look at the Ethiopian what the original might have looked more like. So continuing, he is one God, rational and living, and there is no God and no being to be worshipped beside him. By your grace, you have shown us who you are, and we have known you. You have ordered us to preach in your name, and we have obeyed your order, and so we are now before you, and you are in us and with us. Do not forsake us and those who believe in you through us. Confirm your true saying to us before these multitudes who are assembled here before you, in order that they may know that you are their God and their true Lord. We implore you in your great name in the time of our need to answer our supplications and grant us that which we expect from you. Let's see how long this prayer is. I'll just skip the end of the prayer. When my supplication to God reached these words, all my body was illuminated with lights, which were also reflected on all those who were present. And a gentle wind blew on us, which emitted scents sweeter than all perfumes, which extended to those that were far and near. And the Holy Spirit appeared and fortified me and assured me that I would perform that miracle. I drew therefore near the sepulcher and raised my voice and said, O dead man whose body has perished, arise from your sleep by the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, and hasten to come to me here. Immediately after the Son of the King came out to me, I seized him by his hand and presented him to his father, who instantly believed in God and our Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, as also did all his relatives and all the inhabitants of the city. After this, people hastened to the temples which they demolished and to the idols of which they broke up. In their places, they laid foundations for churches, and all the people worshipped the cross. Okay, I don't think they worshipped the cross. So that's probably either a, a bad translation or interpolation. Uh, but then it says, The son of the king was then asked about his condition after his death and what his soul had seen. And he replied that, um, Is that all there is? Is that all there is? If that's all there is, Dan